Over the weekend, there was a dispute that went viral between a Vietnam vet and a councilman over the sign outside of the vet store. If you are born with a male anatomy, you cannot be a chick. And the councilman came into the store to confront the vet about the sign outside of a store. And I'm just going to show you a brief video of what happened. And then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about it. Uh-huh. Nine out of ten customers love it. Yeah. You know what? It's bullsh**. No, what you're spouting is bullsh**. You are an embarrassment to this city. I am a pillar in this city. For Christ's sakes. Really? For Christ's sakes, who would want to even, even be close? My God. Really? It's horrible. First of all, I know a lot of people have already seen uh, this viral incident and I am not talking about this kind of stuff to feed into drama. I talk about this stuff just to give people different ways of thinking about situations like this, okay? Situations like this are not for pure entertainment. There is a lesson to be learned when we see stuff like this going viral on the internet. If you look at the situation, it started out calm, right? They were talking to each other or fairly calm. Still, you could tell both people were upset, but it started out fairly calm and then things escalated fairly quickly, okay? So the big question at hand was, are trans men women? And I don't need to get into all of the details in this video concerning that, Um I believe trans men are trans men, okay? And first of all, I believe that everybody should be respected, okay? So this was a situation where, and I will refer to the trans man as um, the politician, and I will refer to the store owner as vet for the sake of this video. Hopefully those terms don't offend anybody, but you know, I'm just trying to simplify things here. Okay, so the politician goes into the store and he confronts the vet. Okay, he didn't like the sign that was outside of his store. And, he, and when he goes into the store, he's wearing a skirt, a purse, women's jewelry. And I'm not sure if he thought by wearing this stuff, it would kind of help to get his point across better. But that is what the politician did. And the vet seems to just be very shocked and um, pretty much disgusted by how he's stressed and his behavior. And it seems people on both sides are fed up with everything that is going on. You have people on one side who may identify with a politician who are saying, I'm sick of people judging me. I just want people to accept me the way I am. And then you have people like the Vietnam vet who's in his 70s and he's looking at what's going on today and he, he just can't believe it. He's feeling like he's living in the twilight zone. So I'm going to tell you what I see when I look at the politician who walk in the store. I see a person who is hurting who's just going through a lot emotionally and mentally. I see a person who is confused and I see a person who just wants to be loved. Okay, when I look at the vet, I see a person who has been through a lot. I mean, he served in Vietnam. He's obviously seen some things a lot of us cannot even imagine. He's in his 70s. He's looking at what's going on today and he cannot believe it. He's dumbfounded. He's feeling like his freedom is starting to be stripped right away from him. So instead of him feeling like I can't say what I'm really feeling, I'm going to double down. I'm going to put a sign outside of my store and I'm going to say what I want to say. Okay, this is a person who's feeling like he's drowning in all of the craziness of the world. And probably too experiencing a lot of hurt and pain from what he's been through in Vietnam and other things that have happened in his life. So the fact of the matter is we all are experiencing hurt and pain. We all are looking for compassion and understanding. 
This is why I believe it is so important for us to get back to having real conversations with each other. And let me tell you, I get it, okay? If you're upset about something, if you're fed up about something, you're not gonna think about, oh, I need to have a conversation with this person or I need to be compassionate for this person. Trust me, I've been there a lot, especially if somebody's coming at you a certain way and you feel disrespected. Like the politician came in the store and he's basically checking the vet about his sign outside of his store. And he's like, oh no, I, I have the right and the freedom to have my sign outside of my store if that's what I wanna do. And I get it, people are upset with each other. Not everybody's going to have that compassion and understanding that a lot of people are searching for. But then there are some of us everyday people who might say, okay, you know what? I see a need, so I'm going to step in and I'm going to try to do my part to uh, fill that need. And when you're having compassion and understanding for somebody, it's not a matter of you having to agree with what they're doing, right? It's just a matter of you sitting down and having a real conversation with these people. Uh, because I think a lot of people are really desperate for somebody to talk to about what they're going through on the inside. So I, I was going to school temporarily out in Florida and I had a roommate who um, identified in the LGBT community, okay? She was dating women. And when I first had this roommate, I was kind of like, Oh, oh man, you know, I, I'm just going to be honest with you, right? That's kind of how I felt in the beginning. But as time went on, and I'm kind to everybody. I didn't treat her rudely or anything like that. I was kind to her. We became friends. You know, we were able to talk to each other. And I noticed a lot of times when I would sit down and I had these conversations with her, she just started to open up more and more to me about what was going on in her life. And she told me that her mom died when she was young and she was basically living with her dad and her brother uh, before she got to college. And, you know, she just started to open up to me more and more. We would have these long conversations. And, you know, there were times when we were talking to each other, she would literally break down crying because she was just bottling up so much hurt, but she didn't have anybody to talk to. And I know there are counselors out there, but not everybody's going to go and get counseling. Sometimes you're going to be that ear for that person. And I always like to do that for people, especially my friends. I mean, she was a cool girl. So as time went on, you know, she started to dress more feminine because she used to wear men's clothing. So months down the road, um, she came to me and she told me that she was dating a guy. Because prior to that, she was only dating women. And I was like, really? And, you know, we started to talk about it. And she told me that she was trying to turn her life around. And I was just like, wow, well, you know, good for you, girl. And, you know, I noticed like the change that she started to go through, the more and more conversations we started to have. And it was such a beautiful thing. And that is the power of having conversations with people because it can invoke change. Now, I'm not saying that it's always going to be that drastic. Sometimes you'll be that person who will be there to plant a good seed. And I think that's what we all should strive towards doing. I don't care what side you stand on when it comes to different issues in the world or political issues. Focus on planting good seeds. Not everybody has to agree with our stance, okay? And I think that we're kind of being programmed in a way that if people do not agree with us, that we should go and attack them, whether verbally or physically, and get upset with them. And that is not the way you're going to be able to get your point across. You know, I've noticed more and more people are really starting to double down on their beliefs. And... If your beliefs align with the Bible and your morals and values, that is okay, right? But if they don't align with the Bible and if you're a Christian, then I would highly suggest that you check it. 
So I, I just want to end things on this uh, 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, right? They want to hear what they want to hear. They will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. So in other words, based on what you want to do, you're going to seek people out who is teaching or talking about what you want to do and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. In other words, you're going to start believing lies because you want to do certain things and you want it to be okay. So therefore you're seeking out maybe a church or a school or, you know, friends, family who agree with your lifestyle, even if it's a lie even if it does not align with God and biblical principles. The three C's that are important to keep in mind as we go throughout our journey in life. Christ, making sure we're putting Christ first above anything, even above politics and critical thinking. We got to get back to that, right? Just because we're being told something is right, doesn't make it right. And compassion, learning to love each other, forgive each other, and try and understand each other. Anyway, that is all for now. Um, just make sure you keep that in mind. But until the next video, take care, God bless you, and I'll see you in the next one.